uh, it continues to be a problem. Uh, we see diving accidents that occurred in pools, uh, and we see diving accidents that have occurred, you know, in lakes and rivers, uh, where it's a little more understandable in the sense that, you, at least around here, you can't see the bottom, so people don't know uh, what they're diving into. Uh, it's uh, again a very, very common, despite the common sense nature of, you know, don't dive into shallow water. I think we all know that. Yet people do it all the time, um, and probably most of the time uh, get away with it. And so we, we we tend not to worry so much. I've seen already this year uh, several injuries from uh, diving into a river, diving into lakes, uh, and it's really important to know uh, what you're diving into, especially in rivers where the the the, uh, the bottom can change. So it may be it may have been fine one day, and the next day there's uh, there's there's new stuff there, whether it's debris. Uh, rocks, sticks, things that, that can move, uh, or even the, the, the depth changes as the sandbars change and things. So These can be uh, anything from minor, minor injuries to, to uh, definitely life-changing injuries, whether they're as a result of paralysis, uh, or even you know, somebody who's paralyzed and in the water uh, may die, may drown, uh, and or have a significant uh, brain injury from, uh, uh, you know, from, from near drowning and then uh, being resuscitated and and then we've seen all those things here this isn't something you just read about or see on tv and think it doesn't happen here it, it happens here uh, and uh, you know so if you think about a swimming pool the, the the diving wells are you know typically 12 feet deep i think and yet uh, people are diving in lakes and rivers uh, in less than that all the time uh, unfortunately a lot of these injuries also include um, alcohol and other uh, other things that impair our judgment. So um, often, uh, if it's in a pool, it may be after hours, late at night, uh, with or without alcohol. Uh, if it's in, again, lakes and rivers, you just can't see the water depth. You don't know what it's like. Well, with, a, with an impact, the, the injuries can be, can be a variety of things. But if, uh, if it's the neck, which is the most common injury, we see anything from uh, fractures of the uh, joints here and, and single isolated nerve injuries to uh, uh, injuries of, uh, of multiple nerves together. Uh, we see complete fractures and dislocations of the uh, vertebrae uh, with resultant uh, spinal cord injury, which will then potentially affect uh, uh, function of everything below that area. So uh, the arms below the injury, the legs, uh, and can be um, you know, partial paralysis to complete uh, you know, quadriplegia. Um, and uh, oftentimes the surgery, uh, which is necessary, is more of a, uh, a structural surgery where we're repairing bones and realigning bones, but the, the nerve damage and the spinal cord damage has already occurred, and we're not able to reverse that. So even though somebody comes in and, and needs surgery for their spinal cord injury, uh, often the, the damage is done and the surgery is... Uh, is helpful in many ways, but it's not going to restore their uh, their ability to move.